Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Stone. I'm Robert Runyon, and today I'm joined by Daniel Steinman, and we're going to show you exactly how to multiply your existing efforts to grow your Amazon business and sell your products in more markets, plus a few extras. That's coming up next on Behind the Stone. Daniel, thank you for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm so thankful to have you on the show. No, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Robert. I, I always love to sort of share a bit of insights and knowledge with, with sellers. So yeah, let's get to it. Me too. We've got a ton of value packed on setting up your business to go international, packed into a short episode. So, but before we get into that, tell me a little bit about, about you and Z. Take a moment to brag on yourself and your company. Uh, thanks, Robert. So a bit of background on myself. Um, I actually uh, own a DTC brand. So just for context, Z is part of a larger group of companies called the Bad IT Group. We're the, we're the world's largest regulation tech company. Uh, and when I joined, they sort of put me on this e-commerce project, which they called, um, you know, Z, because I sort of own the brand. And, you know, fast forward 16 months, and um, a zine's gone from, you know, initial team that started the business from four to over 100 employees helping Amazon and e-commerce brands expand globally. Uh, I love wine. I'm a bit, a bit of a, I've made a lot of, I lost a lot of money on crypto and uh, in my free time. Um, I, I do actually just love to also sell it. Uh, I love to, to sort of add value. That's incredible, Daniel. Some really awesome stuff there, which brings us into the perfect transition because today Daniel and I are going to explain how to avoid global seller mistakes, what you can do about them, and offer actionable steps to become successful in international markets. So I really think the first part uh, to talk about is where to start. You know, let's say I have an e-commerce business and I'm looking for ways to reach a foreign market. Daniel, what are the first things I need to consider and how do I ensure that I don't waste any money and time to make that happen? Yeah, great question, Robert. I think what you've just asked is sort of on the lips of so many sellers. I think global expansion is really, truly about a kickoff. Um, the problem is there's just so many different things to consider when going global. Um, I think if you are a private label seller, one of the main things you need to look at is starting to look at making sure your brand is trademarked or getting that process going um, into Europe and the UK, for instance. And um, I think you need to kind of think about where are your brand currently in a maturity level in the States or wherever you're selling and what is the next market you want to go to. Now, for US sellers, um, if they are doing north um, and they are seeing friction in Canada and Mexico, it's good to look at saying, listen, maybe we need to actually fulfill from Canada and Mexico so we can get access to their prime members. Uh, a lot of sellers actually don't know if NAF, you don't have access to prime members if you're fulfilling from the States. Um, if you're doing that already, which is a lot of times the case, it's, it's going across the waters that seems the most daunting. Um, and when you're going into Europe and the UK, um, you need to make sure that sort of from a first point of view, you are VAT registered. Now, VAT is sort of similar to sales tax in the US, except it's a compliant um, that you need to have in the country uh, to sell there. So you actually need an accountant that does all of your filings on a monthly or quarterly basis um, as your sales come in. Um, Z actually recently acquired a VAT provider. So we sort of in-house make sure we, we enable you to sell uh, there and help you get VAT registered. I think secondly, uh, I call this sort of the research phase, it's including the VAT side, is depending on your product category. Now, if you're doing electronics or cosmetics, uh, there's a much more sort of product compliance to consider when going um, to new markets. You know, what is the sort of um, current we act implication in yours? Are you EPR registered? Um, who's going to be your uh, CE marks and responsible persons? There's a lot of things to consider. Uh, so I think it's that sort of planning out saying, I need to get my trademark. I need to make sure I'm, I'm registered for that. And what do I need? Uh, to be legal for import and for sale in that country. So that's sort of a two, three months planning phase of seeing, you know, what you need. I think obviously from this is more where my expertise lie, but I would suggest to use sort of a tool like Smart Scout, Helium 10 or Jungle Scout to sort of go look, what is your potential in that market? Um, and then sort of plan accordingly for how you want to start uh, dripping stock into those markets. That makes perfect sense. And I, I see now, so how, how do I know if there's any mistakes in my process and, and how do I monitor this? Is this something that Amazon takes care of itself? 
So that's the problem. Amazon sometimes, and I speak to quite a lot of big sellers, that Amazon prompts them to look at going into the UK or Europe. But, you know, that's where they say, bye, Felicia. You know, they don't actually spend any time with you. Um, a lot of times when people are used to shipping into the US from China, they have a freight forwarder. They act as their own importer because they have the entity set up in the, in the US. And, and they're used to that. I think the moment you go into a new market, you need to remember that, for import purposes, you need a physical representation in that country. Someone with all of the import licenses and permits that can file and import the goods correctly on your behalf. Um, that is sort of what Z's bread and butter is. All of that um, compliance, headaches with import, uh, all of the sort of paperwork and permits needed for importation. That's sort of what, that's what we specialize in. Um, we aren't a freight forwarder, sort of, I don't know if that would have been your next question, but we work with freight providers and we have great rates to offer our clients so that we can do a DDP shipment for them, you know, taking care of picking up the goods in country, doing the, the cross border, um, you know, fulfilling it into country and then doing the final delivery to Amazon. So in a hypothetical world, if you know that your product will sell in Europe and the UK, um, you are trademarked there, um, Z can sort of take care of your entire supply chain. While then, you know, you need to make sure that from a listing side of your point of view, uh, you are set up. Um, I think I'm talking a lot here, but I think I'm answering a lot of the questions that the, the sellers will have. Above that, we are sort of setting up in that country. It's important to make sure that you are localizing um, your listings. Now, what that means, Robert, is when you type something into Google Translate, that's not translation for, for selling purposes. Yes, uh, you might think that as an American, but the way you know um, certain words are spelled in the US and UK are different. And if you're not picking that up, uh, you're missing on crucial keywords. A similar with Germany phrases that you think you're searching for isn't the same. So we have a few partners. We don't do that, uh, but we have someone, you know, or we can suggest when it comes to sort of the translations of your listings. I know I said a lot, but I, I don't know if that sort of answers your, a bit of your question of like what your, your steps are when going international. Yeah, no, you hit the nail right on the head there. So now we know what we need to consider when going global. So what's the best way to get my goods from the pickup point to their final import destination? Yeah, so I think it depends on of where you're selling. So let's say you're based in Europe or you're based in the UK and you've got an import um, entity there. Um, then you probably don't need to use us for our importation because you can act as your own importer. Uh, we can assist you with your product compliance and freight. Uh, but like I said, our bread and butter is, is when it comes to the importation, all of the complexities there. Uh, so when you are, let's say, a hypothetical US client that wants to go into Europe, now we would be your sort of one-stop shop to take care of all of the compliance, the import, the products, uh, we'll actually pick up the goods for you in country, do the final delivery and the, the, the sort of the international leg of the, the freight um, and deliver it to the warehouse. So for a lot of supply chain managers in, um, in big Amazon uh, companies, they sort of end up like having to sit around and play with their thumbs because we take over uh, quite a large point of the, the process. I think if you as a seller respect your own time, uh, Z is sort of a crucial element to consider. If you don't respect your time and you want to like bump into walls and try and figure out loopholes and ways to do it, uh, there is, you know, so you don't have to use us if you want to waste a lot of time and trying to figure it out. Just sort of be wary that a lot of times when people use their freight forwarder to import, um, that import VAT into Europe and the UK is 19%. So um, use it, losing 19% uh, because you haven't filed correctly uh, is a bit of a, a big margin cut for, I think, most sellers these days. That you're 100% right. So let's say that I'm a US-based seller and I want to expand into a European market. So how can I do just that? Do you have a checklist or any kind of best practices to follow? Yeah, so I think sort of my previous two points, like mainly gave an example already. So I don't want to reiterate everything, but I think maybe to add on that, um, I think it's important to, the only thing I could add would be to make sure that in terms of who's going to be setting up your account and running at that side, to sort of make the decision uh, if you're going to outsource that to your current agency and really do ask them the hard questions. I think a lot of agencies and help you as brands. But the moment they go into Europe, an agency would never say no for more work. Uh, so I think it's important to make sure that that agency actually have international um, you know, knowledge on how the, 
the, the rankings and the translations and everything works uh, when you're taking them over. Uh, but if you are happy with saving a lot of time, uh, if you work with me, I can really make sure we take care of like, you know, every single tick box that, that you would need. You know, I think we work with sellers that do a few hundred thousand a month to in the 10 minutes. So it's, it really depends on where your business is. But when you are doing well in the US, I'm encouraging you to sort of look at the expansion opportunity because sooner or later, uh, this is going to be what all of your competitors are doing. It makes perfect sense. And, and you know, you had uh, mentioned VAT previously and, and the 19%. So how does VAT reclaim work? Yes. So how it works is when you are importing the goods into a country, um, you need to pay over that 19% to the customs. So when, when you work with Z, we sort of deal with customs on your behalf directly. So we do the custom clearance approaches and everything. But in a, in a world where you don't use us, you would have to do, do sort of send those goods to customs and make sure that you pay that over on behalf at import. So if you don't have that ready at import, they'll, they'll sort of like, you'll have a stuck shipment at, at the borders. Um, there is certain countries uh, like France currently where there's VAT deferment. So what that means is for cash flow, for sellers that's with cash trap, um, you don't have to pay the import VAT on import, but only later, which is a great thing for sellers to know because that can help you a bit with cash flow. How the VAT works though is with, with us doing your filings or if you want to use someone else, um, you, they file on your behalf. Um, so you get input VAT and output VAT. Um, I sort of, unfortunately, I'm an accountant, so I do know this well, but I'm going to try and keep this brief uh, because you don't actually have to worry too much about it if you have someone doing it on your behalf. But the output VAT is on your sales price. Uh, they add a percentage VAT on sales. And then the, the goods that you imported, obviously, that's your import VAT. So that kind of plays off against each other in your month and your quarterly filings, where there's a sort of a, a net amount that you need to be paid o paying over or, you know, that they pay you over. So a bit more complex than, than sales tax, but um, not a reason to, not a hindrance to keep you out of the U UK or EU. That makes perfect sense. So Daniel, we've covered a lot of great things here today. So for more great tips on making Global Feel Local or, you know, depending on where you're at in your business today, be sure to reach out to Z.co or Daniel directly. You'll be able to get a 50% discount on Z's fixed fees on your first shipment. Be sure to mention Sunkasone whenever you reach out. I'll leave a link in the description box below this video. Um, Daniel, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I really, really appreciate you bringing on the show. You shared a tremendous amount of value. Any final tips for anybody listening or watching right now? Yeah, thanks, Robert. I really appreciate it. Um, I think, as you mentioned, they can contact me directly on Daniel, S-T-E, at Z.co. Strangely spelled, so just go look in the, the comments below. But I'm more than happy to sort of sit with sellers and say, let's look at your business and what is the best opportunity for you. I think that it's so important to know that there's no blueprint for success in expanding, but rather um, different ways that you can look at it. So yeah, like I said, happy to, to talk to them. And um, especially with Prime Day and sort of Q3 and 4 around the corner, if you are selling now, it's important to get the ball rolling now that we can get you over the line uh, for later this year. And thanks so much, Robert. Really enjoyed it and looking forward to, to hearing back from everyone. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks, Daniel. Thank you for being on the show, man. Make sure you subscribe to the Sunkist Own YouTube channel for tips, tricks, and tutorials to improve e-commerce strategy, growth, and operations every week. Just click the red subscribe button right below or click on our channel page to see more videos. So what's your next step? Follow Z on all their socials for updates and expert advice on expanding your e-commerce empire. Email them at danielste at z.co. With any questions, I'll leave a link in the description box below this video for all their social channels as well. And if you really want to level up your e-commerce strategy, then watch this video next. It's called Five Proven E-Commerce Strategies to 10X Your Business, where you'll learn insider secrets from Tanner Tozan and CEO Adam Weiler on how to scale seven and eight-figure e-commerce businesses. Just click on the video, and I'll see you on your screen.